Hey everybody, today I'm going to Hagger Im, which is really, it looks like Hagger Quim, but it's really Hagger Im. They don't pronounce the Q. Um, it's a monolithic site, um, but it's kind of interesting. There's really two sites, um, but one entrance. And so it's got like one museum in the front, and then it's got one site, and then you walk about a kilometer, and then you get to the next site. Um, so I'm going to do them separately, or you get a you know, a 50 minute video. Um, so if you watch this one, Hager M, just know that if you watch the second one, the front museum part is the exact same. I'm gonna put it on the front so that no matter which one, so if somebody that doesn't know me or doesn't see this one, doesn't have to watch the both front end loaders on all the museum and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, I was just trying to figure out how to do it so that uh, it wouldn't be crazy. Anyway, so this one is Hager M. Thanks everybody, bye-bye. So everybody, this is um, a monolithic site type structure with the big stones and the whole nine yards. Um, and the one I'm going to first is this one, Hagar Im. And uh, <laughs> it looks like it's pretty much all in a different language, but that's okay. See, and this one was based on the celestial bodies. And what's interesting is, so they have this, this is what the monument looks like, or the site looks like. And so there were rooms and everything else, right? But they have a button here that says solstice, summer solstice. So that would be the sun. And you see the little red line? It shines through that little tiny hole right there. See the little tiny hole? See it? And then it hits that one little spot right there. How amazing is that, that they, uh, they figured all that out? So I'll go out there and look at that and uh, and see the whole thing in real life. But uh, that's what this one looks like. And I think, is this the way it is today? And that's the way it was before or no? Is this, I don't know, but I think this is the way it looks. And that's the Hagar Quim temples. I say Quim, but it's not Quim. And this is the Majora temples. And this one's a little different. This one, instead of being set up on the solstice, it was set up on the spring and equinox and the winter solstice, so it does all three. So if you press this button, the sun comes on, and you can see a little red line. And it hits that part of the temple. See it? And then if you hit this one, this sun comes on, and it goes right through the main gate and hits the very back of the temple back there. You see the red line? And then if you do this one, the winter solstice, it does the same thing. It hits that one little spot right there, right through the door. So it's pretty amazing stuff. Amazing that they would think of all this stuff back 4,000 years ago, huh? or longer than that, actually. So, but that's what that one looks like. So first will be this one, second one will be that one. And uh, I'll take you around following the excavation in 1839. And it's covered, so they really do a good job of taking care of it. Um, and I'll try to capture as much of this stuff as I possibly can for you. I have people that read. <laughs> Instead of just looking at the pictures, they uh, actually go through and look at this. Damage at Hagar Quim. Huh. Amazing. So this is what it kind of looks like now. The wind is really ripping through out there. So you're probably gonna get a lot of wind noise. So the stone must have broke. And so they had to do something to, to support that. That's too bad, huh? Technology has helped us understand the deterioration of the site with these infrared sudden increase in temperatures and megaliths and air. July to practice the shelter. Okay. Wow. So you can see that certain stones get hotter. That's kind of cool. Please touch. This is material used for protective shelter at the heart. Although the material is still allowed uh, light to pass through the protective. Please touch. Okay. Hmm. Let's go look at this one. 
astronomy. The dawn and the spring equinox, 21st to March, and the autumn equinox, September 21st, the sun rises directly up to the doorway of the southern temple, blah, blah, blah. And that's this one temple. But the question is, why'd they do it? Why go to all that trouble? There are many possible reasons for the solar alignments. Maybe they acted as a calendar. They played a role in rituals that took place. Uh, none of the above. <laughs> it is clear how, it is not clear how they did it. The circular holes has been discovered along with several alignments and record blah, blah, blah. Pretty neat stuff, huh? Similar within the Eastern Temple of Mahaga drilled in circular patterns. Mathematic astronomers Franklin suggest that these holes were tally of the days between appearances of one stone to another. Wow. So are each one of these little days and they could mark off the days or is this down here? Why'd they do the tally? Really the tally? Uh, <laughs> it's pretty amazing stuff actually. To date, these meg megaliths are the only indicators of possibility alignments with the stars in Maharja. However, many alignments have been said, okay, the position of the stars appear to be in the horizon change of ratio. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna go through this a little bit quicker. Instance to the temple, that's fine. Oh, look. Did they put stars and moons and the starlight, sunlight in there too? So, remember this place? So this one was pretty amazing. Um, the sunlight, uh, so the New Grange, Ireland. So I've been in this one. And it really is amazing. You have to go through this little tunnel, but it gets right to the very middle. And one day a year, it was the exact same situation. The sunlight would hit the very center of that um, new Grange in, in uh, Ireland. Huh. Now that's funny too. So astronomical alignments have been proposed to the new other sites, including Stonehenge, I've been there. New Grange, I've been there. Karnak, I've been there. And Abu, I've been to all of those. That's pretty amazing. Pauses you need to everybody. There's a lot of information here. Broken pieces of pottery and drinks on this card. Clay, water, sand, and crushed pottery shards and glass. Okay. Let's do the English side. Hmm. And it, at that one in um, Gozo, they actually had fingerprints in the clay from, you know, <laughs> 5,600 years ago, which is pretty crazy all in and of itself. Hmm. Here. Known as Venus of Hagar Klim, the clay figurine is naturally used, naturalistic used uh, unusually. Hmm. Hmm. 
it's nice to know that the people back then had uh, had some girth to them, which is wonderful. Some blocks were cut from the nearby building site. Okay. How'd they do it? Internal passage is very fluid. Two possibilities. Oh, a ramp. So they took a ramp and dragged them up. I can't imagine. I mean, some of these stones are so big. And then this one, they kind of dragged them up and built it up, built it up, built it up. And I saw how they did the ones in Egypt, how they dug a hole out of and, and put sand in it and then built it and then drained the sand out of the, which is pretty amazing. <laughs> Neither can have a small teeth island had no advanced technology, no metal tools, no writing. Yet they built the oldest freestanding stone buildings of such complex in the world. Wow. What did the temples look like? Huh. So they put the top on it. And they built the ring around it. And then they added to it. Huh, they built a roof over it too, maybe? Wow. Wow. It's funny because New Grange was the same way. They stacked all these layers of stones and stones and stones and stones, and then they put dirt on top of it, and then it grew grass and stuff. And how does the temple look like? The remains of the temple there is okay, roofed. Wow. You know, we were pretty amazing people <laughs> six thousand years ago. Wow. Let's go look around over here and see if there's more on this side. Again, it is really windy out there, so. Uh, we don't care about the birds. Hmm. Okay, and it looks like these are the guys that discovered it. And then this is... What is this landscape? Uh -huh, uh -huh. So is this Hagar? Huh. Mega queries. Here's the temples. That's where I'm at. That's what it looks like from above. Man, that's staggering, isn't it? Hmm. Here's the tower we used to communicate Hagar Temple. Very cool. Okay, everybody. I think we pretty much got this. So I guess I'm going to move on and go outside and show you the real stuff. Now that you know all about it, <laughs> let's go. Let's go see it, shall we? Bye, everybody. Okay, one more video before I leave. I, I, you know, just for reference, you know, it's always hard to reference how big the stones are. So this is the site, Harger Quim. There's a guy up there on top of the stone. So think about what that looks like. I mean, you know, let's say he's, let's just say he's six feet tall. That stone's probably 10, 12 feet tall. And then how long you think this is? I mean, that's probably, God, 
you laid him out maybe 6, 12, 18, 20 feet. And it probably is at least three, four feet thick. So how much do you think that stone weighs? How crazy is that? That's pretty amazing, people. I love okay, it. there was another sign here that one guy was reading, so I couldn't get over here and show you, so I thought I'd come over here. Um, they had an elaborate doorway, number one. Number two is the passage to the inner chamber. Number three is the remains of the cor corbelled roof. And then four is the altar-like structure. And then number five is the east temple. And six is the doorway cut from a single slab. Okay, but here's what it says about it. So I'm gonna get closer so you can read it all and then you can go from there. So 3600 BC, so 5600 years ago. Pause as you need to everybody. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? 5,600 years ago. Outstanding. Okay, everybody, I'm moving on. Okay, so I'm going to the temples. I'm going to Hagar M. They don't pronounce the Q, but it's 100 meters. You can see the dome. And then I got to walk 600 meters to the next one. And again, it's really windy, so I'm sorry about the noise, everybody. All right, I'm moving on. Bye. All right. Sorry about the wind, everybody. Wow. Look at the size of those stones. Amazing. Hmm. I have to zoom out. I mean, that is enormous. Like crazy big. Wow. Well, I'm just going to walk around the outside and give you guys a, a taste. I mean, I mean, this stone right here, this big square one, is just enormous. Wow. So that's a good perspective right there. I mean, those people are normal-sized people. Wow. All right, I'm going to pan, so hang on. Looks like this is how they did it. Can you read that? So they dragged it out there on rollers, those rocks, or what have you, and then stood it up. But how would they know if it fit right? That's what, six times three is 18, no, six, yeah, 18 plus uh, one and a half, 19, 20-ish. So I wasn't bad, huh? 
It's so windy. back around where I started at. Wow. Boy, that's pretty amazing, huh? All right, I'm gonna take some pictures, everybody. I'll be right back. All right, let's go inside, shall we? Are you walking underneath these things? Yes. <laughs> Just like that one inside the building, they have one here. Wow. Again, when you look at this stuff, you just have to stop and say, 5,600 years ago. It's probably more like 5,700 years ago, but. So the sun comes through there one day a year and hits over on that wall over there somewhere. Look at those stones. <laughs> it's pretty crazy, huh? If you zoom in on this plaque so you can see what it says. So, that would have been all 
terrace. The former roof. And they had little tables. <laughs> they had a little coffee Starbucks barista right around the corner here with a nickel of coffee. Another interesting, and look right through there, you can see the Amazing, isn't it? Alright everybody, I'm going to move on to the next one. Bye bye.